Hello and welcome back to the Super League. Um, we have a, a small aperitif today. Um, we are doing the auction being recorded on Zoom. It'll be published via our YouTube channel later today. Um, we've got a few managers popping in and out throughout the course of the auction to see if they've been successful in their bids. Um, it's been interesting to administer this one, that's for sure, because uh, budgets are certainly decreased for a number of clubs this year, but uh, one or two have got substantially bigger war chests than everybody else. I'm pleased to say, just as I've hit record, defending champion going into new season, Steve Wright is, uh, is listening in, and also Bostock's boss Scott is here. Hi, buddy, you're right. I found oh, you. Yeah, good, thank you. Looking forward to uh, seeing who's got who in the auction. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always interesting. It's normally good value to see who is after who. And uh, it looks, just as I say hello, that uh, one of the three dicks in charge at, uh, back in charge, I should say, at Dragons. How are you, Duggan? Oh, his audio is not quite connected in. He is there. Oh, there he is. How are you, pal? Hi boys, I'm gonna I'm gonna chuck myself on mute because it's absolutely bedlam here. But I just want to I just want to find out if I've signed Richie Wellens. I'll be honest. Like. Okay. Well, unfortunately, I'll be doing it in alphabetical order, so he'll be announced right at the very end. Um, so you'll just have to wait. Um, but let's get straight into it. And hopefully, Scott, you should be able to confirm for me uh, that. Uh, where is it? If I hit this, you should be able to see the players available for auction now. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well, uh, as I said, they are being done in alphabetical order. So first up on the list is Adolfo. He's been submitted by Asta, clearly not in Alf's plans. And I'm pleased to say that the first player of the day has been snapped up by defending champions Dudley Hill for £2.5 million. Um, I'm not sure if uh, if Steve. I know Steve's listening in. I'm not sure he'll be able to react. Cause he's driving, Scott. Uh, uh, but, oh, okay. How you happy with that one then, Steve? Yeah, it's uh, really good. When he's played a couple of times today, or oh, he, um, you know, a couple of assists and a goal there and there. So just a, yeah, it's a bit of a backup for Roy McKay, maybe. And uh, you know, I think it'll be interesting to see if he gets a few games. How he do if he got say ten games this season, depending how it comes out. And good value, do you think, for two point five mil? Probably a little bit overpriced, really, considering what else I'm going for. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's better than losing somebody in a transfer for him for definite. Well, I can confirm you were also the only team to bid for him. <laughs> Told you were overpriced. <laughs> um, it's worth saying at this point that uh, no Super League season would, would kick off without controversy. We had uh, 13 clubs submit players for today's auction. Uh, only one team did not submit anyone because they thought their squad was thin enough on the ground. They didn't want to lose anybody. We also had 13 clubs submit bids for players. Only one team did not want to bid for anybody in the auction. And uh, for the first time, I think we had a player submitted to the auction that then got retracted because he was already involved in another deal. Um, so... Uh, Kennedy of Devils got removed from the auction, uh, much to the disappointment of, I think, three managers who had bid on him. Um, next up on the list, another Asta reserve. And uh, unlike the last one, um, nobody fancied Augustine. Um, so he will be transfer listed in case anybody who has joined live. And I think, let me just, uh, I should really open a second screen for this just to check. I believe... Um, possibly, yes, there he, there he is. Uh, Tato Mourinho's managed to join us as well, hasn't he? Yes, there he is. I can see his face. How are you, pal? Afternoon. 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 Yeah, very well. Thank you. How are you? I'm all right. I'm trying to make some lunch for the, the children whilst watching. But yeah, I'm good, thanks. Good, good. Well, I was glad to have you with us. Feel free to, uh, to jump in as normal with the auction whenever you like with anything you wish to say. So uh, again, we go back I to- say, Can I just yes. ask, when players go unsold, can we bid for them now? Are you waiting till the end? No, you can bid for them now. Uh, I'm gonna keep them up on the screen while we discuss them. And then uh, if you wanna bid for them, you can let me know. All right, cool. But yes, um, unfortunately we have the first of quite a few players today who have not been bid on. So uh, once the announcement goes out officially via Twitter, 
if anyone wants to as well, they can put a late one in, but uh, he is likely to go onto the Asta transfer list. Um, this release him is fucking garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Next up on the list is not someone going on the transfer list. I did think at one point he was going to, um, because it took the last uh, two of the last clubs to submit bids to actually put one in. Um, Loco did put in a £5 million bid, but it wasn't quite enough because um, Amoroso will be going to the new look under the new manager, the new look sloths for £6 million. Uh, any reaction? Good value, £6 million, Scott? Makes sense. How do you, how do you want to be a striker, someone who will do OK? I don't think he's going to turn up too many trees, but if you'd have asked me where he was going, I'd have definitely said Sloth. No, it, it does make sense. And uh, I think, um, I don't know what any of you guys think, but uh, Hodgie's definitely got one hell of a rebuilding job to do at Sloths to, to make the squad, A, a lot more competitive than it was, and B, there were a number of players sort of retiring or leaving because they'd been left to rot in the reserves and sign contracts elsewhere because the previous manager didn't want them. So uh, it's, it's a massive rebuilding job, Hodgie's got. <laughs> Um, the next three players on the list, uh, which we will slide through now, nobody has submitted bids for. Um, now, one of them surprises me, and that's uh, that's this guy. We, we were pretty sure he was always going to turn up on the uh, on the auction. Um, it was a signing of the previous assistant manager that that none of the current management team wants. But then, oh, that's gone a lot quicker than I thought. Uh, so yeah, so he um, no bids for Anshui, um, and we'll be going on the transfer list should nobody want to put in a late bid. But then I was a bit more surprised because uh, a lot of people talk uh, talk about this guy that particularly for for a bit of width, maybe a bit of cover, maybe it's his age, Tato. Do you think that stop people bidding? Yeah, it must be. He's got him. I got him. I got him in at Asta. I think, and he was he was decent. He played a few games. If you look at his uh, reserve there, he's he's all right. If, if you need a, a right back, definitely his backup, and he can uh, play right wing as well, depending on your formation. He's he's, he's he's all right actually. Well, he is currently unattached and will be going on the transfer list. I think the fact that he was backup for Aster tells you why nobody bid for him. <laughs> And then the, the next player um, to also not receive any bids, another Dragons player. Um, I've been kind of, whenever I've had the chance to look at reserve teams and, and sort of try and highlight players, I've been pushing for him to, to get some game time, but nobody seems to want to, to give Boomsong the opportunity. Um, can you see any particular reason why that would be, Scott? No, I think he featured for Phoenix when they won it, didn't they? Um, he did. He's versatile. Well, um, he'd do a job for somebody. Better than Arca, anyway. <laughs> well, again, a player who will be going on the transfer list should know late bids come in. Um, next up um, is Stephen Bywater. Um, I think he's... I think he's, he's uh, oh, hello, Jens. How are you? Hi, mate. I'm, uh, I'm fine. I'm outside with the kids, so just don't worry about me. <laughs> no worries. Well, you enjoy listening in on the conversation and finding out who of your uh, multiple bids you've been successful in obtaining. Um, in fact, it was by water that was one of your bids. Um, so you'll be interested to know that two bids were received for the Devils goalkeeper. Um, Leddisford um, had submitted a £1.5 million bid, but it wasn't enough. And he will be joining Halls for £3.5 million. So uh, hopefully, Jens, you'll be quite happy with that acquisition. Um, Very Tato, good. Very good. Tato, what was it about um, Bywater that you wanted? And do you think that 3.5 to Halls is overpaying? Um, no bids that have come in today have overpaid at all. Not one single person. So um, I just want to put that out there straight away, early doors. <laughs> okay. um, uh, no, if you need a goalkeeper, then you pay whatever you need. He's, he'd be a good backup, second choice, maybe third choice. I wanted him. I've only got Serini and Taibi, so uh, and then it's just good lad. So I wanted him as third choice, really. But is what it is. No, Decent. Um, again, we now have three players who have not received a single bid. Um, first off, another Devils player, Stephen Carr, was signed in an auction a couple of seasons ago. 
made a couple of first team appearances, but uh, but never became a first team regular. So he has gone by the wayside and will be added to the transfer list. Um, next up is Church Towns Tanya. Uh, again, no bids received for him. Well, I'm not sure why I've done that screen. It was meant to be his player stack screen. Perhaps that's why no one wanted him. They couldn't see if he was any good. And then Christian, who um, at the top, the then Levis boss, Mega Horse, brought in as an outer league signing. But uh, nobody was tempted to try and give him a, a second okay. opportunity. Jens, mute yourself. Sorry. <laughs> I was just letting it slide. It was nice to hear kids enjoying themselves. Um, the next two, however, they have got new clubs. So let's have a look at who's next on the list. And it's Fulchester's George A. Costa. Uh, the centre-backs never really had a run in the first team, it's fair to say. Um, a couple of bids submitted for him. Uh, Dragon stuck in a, a cheeky 500k, um, but that wasn't enough because paying £4 million on top of that is, again, defending champions Dudley Hill. So £4.5 million pounds for a 33-year-old centre-back. Uh, happy with that, Steve? Yeah, definitely. I've got, got much um, behind. So I've got uh, Jerram Ferdinand and Gary Neville as my first choice three. Um, if I'm wanting a fourth, I'm either using Addo, which I don't really want to do, or I'm dipping into reserve with Litos, who I picked up last auction, or Negro, who's done really well. Um, I don't buy into age thing. I'm obviously with Southgate and... I've lost my three starting centre backs, two through retirement, one through being a prick, going on a Bosman. <laughs> uh, so I just, I just, there's a fourth choice. He's very strong if you look at him in editor as well. So I think he'll he'll come in as good cover. Probably probably might only get one or two games through the season, but as a fourth choice, uh, yeah, very happy with it. Excellent. Well, I'm glad you're happy. Um, and then the next player to be snapped up in the auction is a former Super League winner. Uh, Sebastian Geisler, he'll be leaving Churchtown. Again, a couple of bids received for him. Um, Jens stuck in a, a fair-looking £6 million bid and looked to have won until new Devils boss Rob came in and decided to splash some cash, and he spent £8 million on the uh, right-sided midfielder. So, uh, unfortunately, Jens, you've missed out on that one. Uh, £8 million, Scott, do you think that's good value? I think it's a bit overpriced, to be honest. Um, Never, never really featured much before. Only sort of in and out for a few clubs here and there. Never really done anything exciting. I think Ryan again back in at Phoenix wanted to try and get him involved a little bit more, but every time he put him in, he didn't do anything special. So, um, you know, I don't think he's going to feature that much. But if clubs have got that money to spend and it's a, you know, it's a bit of versatility or backup, then then why not? I guess. And it could be um, it could be part of a a new sort of brand of football being played. Uh, I believe if you can hear me, we're now joined also by uh, Ian Edwards. How are you, Pat? Hi, mate. I'm good. Thanks. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you fine. Thank you. You've, Hello, you've not you've not missed too much. Uh, you, you've joined in early enough to see most of the auction. Um, thoughts on Dysler going to the New Look Devils? He looks like a a decent dies, though, doesn't he? But he hasn't really done much. So, and I don't think looking at the Devils team that Rob's inherited that is going to get much of a look in, barring plenty of injuries. But I might be wrong. Yeah, I mean, if you've got the money to splash around, then fair enough. Uh, obviously, we're pretty skint, so we can't compete on that level, really. Uh, there were a lot of, I think it's fair to say, most clubs, I, I can't remember the exact figure, but I think. 11 of the 14 clubs had less than 20 million to spend. The other three have decided to make use of that. Mm. Um, next up on the list is, uh, no, that's one too many, is uh, De Baggio of uh, Hulls. And nobody um, stuck in a bid for him. So he will be going onto the transfer list. Um, stats wise, he looks. All right, not great, but again, probably age working against him, Ian, do you think? Lords, you, you don't like to see 11s, do you? I think it's the worst It's the worst number to see on a, on a start. I hate 11s, and he's got loads of them, so he's declining. Yeah. He's, um, yeah, I can see why no one's, no one's gone for him. I certainly won't be chucking half a million, that's for sure. 
No, that's absolutely fine. Um, again, it's worth saying if anyone, you can wait to the end if you want to, or if, if you do see anyone that hasn't had a bid and you want to stick in a, a half million pound, then by all means, just shout up and let me know. I've got the spreadsheet open to the left of the screen. I can add it on. Um, someone who was always looking like joining a club is Hall's goalkeeper, Dida. Um, clearly fell out with Jens, um, I think it was the season before last, actually. Um, never really got a look in, um, ended up in the reserves. Well, he had um, four clubs going after him and three of them pitched their bids all around the same area. Churchtown put in two million, uh, Haggis put in two and a half, Loco put in two and a half as well. But again, the new look sloths have got themselves a new player um, spending four million pound on the goalkeeper. Uh, Tato, do you think four million for Dida is good value for sloths? Yeah, I do see that. Yeah. And uh, again, me and Spire has gone three and a half, and he, he looks good. And again, performance in the reserves has been uh, good enough. If you need to keep a formula in Snoff, if you've got it, no, absolutely, absolutely. And again, as as me and Scott were saying, it's a it's a rebuilding job Hodge's got on there. So I think having a goalkeeper he can rely on uh, potentially at least is is a good place to start. The next two on the list um, is. Uh, Drossos of Bostock Stanley, a player that Scott submitted, no bids received. Um, Scott, you surprised that no one put a bid in or, or not really? And that's why you put him in the auction. Scott's still there? Might not be there anymore. Um, OK, no, fair enough. But no bids for, for Drossos. The next player also will be going on the transfer list unless anyone wants to come in. And it is another Bostock reserve. Damien Duff uh, had nobody interested either. It surprises me when a lot of the players that go into the auction are, are older. And as Ian was saying on uh, De Biagio, that they're declining. Um, someone who, yes, he's not featured too much, but approaching peak um, age and ability in terms of Damien Duff, not, no one's even considered maybe a half million just to- I'll stick half in. Yeah, you want half on, on Duff here? Yeah. No worries. I will stick that in for you now. What? Why? What is it that's made you think that? Just me saying you're surprised that no one has, or is there an actual reason? Um, I have been playing around with a couple of formations that I might want to try, and he might just. I think his ta I think his defensive stats are good enough to play. Where that I left wing play. back role kind of thing. Mm. Nice ringtone as well. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> um, another player not struggling to find a new club um, was Dragons David Dunn. Um, I believe they only signed him last season in the auction themselves, possibly. Um, but he has gone and he has joined uh, Tato Mourinho at Ledsford for six and a half million pounds. Um, happy with that signing, Tato? Yeah, I'll take him. If you can hear me now, I've got my headset on. Yeah, yeah I'll take him. He's his stats are solid enough, mid to late teens. Uh, looking at playing him centre mid, if, if if I need him. Yep. I'm a bit short at centre mid, and I think there's a no-brainer, really. It's a good, good backup. No, he's, he's the sort of player I'd expect teams to be bidding for. You were the only team, which which surprised me. I thought there might be a couple of others who, who would have been interested, particularly, like, say, for centre midfield. He's, I've, I've asked him that sort of question as he started eating. I can see in the bottom of my screen. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll carry on and let him enjoy his lunch. Uh, the next two, again, will be unattached. They will be going on the transfer list should nobody uh, want to stick a bid in. So the first one is Adilson of Locomotive Boston. Um, he, he played reasonably well for the reserves, although you might expect a few more goals from him. Um, he came in and did a job when he first arrived. But again, I think he's one of those players where age has perhaps worked against him. Um, I, he's not one that's ever going to be challenging the likes of Sagal Cohen and Penza and Tony, etc. I don't think for goals, but could have been a decent squad player for, for anyone who, who was interested. Uh, the other player going on the transfer list is Northern Burns, Adu, nobody, nobody taking a gamble. Uh, not really featured for you either, Ian. So um, are you surprised no one put in a bid or, or not really? Uh, I think in my reserves, apart from the second half of last season, have historically been terrible. Um, Edu, he was comfortably one of the best in my reserves at the start of this iteration. And I actually brought him up uh, once or twice 
and tried him in the first team, but he didn't do an awful lot. Um, and so, I don't know, look, he, he looks decent and, and he has had some really super reserve performances, but no, I, I guess not. He's not on, on many people's radar, is he? Yeah, absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Um, I believe Scott's back with us. How are, uh, are you back, Scott? Can you hear us? I am. Something happened. I don't know what, but I'm back. No worries at all, mate. No. Well, you haven't missed anything that uh, too adversely affects you other than... Um, uh, the player you submitted for auction, uh, Drossos, didn't receive any bids, um, so he'll be going on the transfer list. Uh, really? Next up on the list is Dudley Hill midfielder Johan Elmander, um, one of those players who has flitted around a number of clubs in various iterations, but nobody has uh, nobody has um, really got anything out of him too much. Uh, but Elmanda has got himself a new club and he'll be joining Alf's Revolution at Asta for £9 million. Pounds. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, How much? £9 million to confirm, Scott. How uh, many other bids were the five there? How many other bids? Uh, none. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not um, one to talk with bids here today, as, was, as we'll find out as the show goes on, like, but that is massive. Uh, so big, big reaction to the Almanda signing. Uh, Steve, if you can hear us, you, uh, did you expect to get nine million for him? I uh, didn't expect anybody to bid for him, really. I picked him up in last auction because nobody were bidding on him. You know, when I started, just stuck 500k in for him. Uh, he played, come up, played one game, got a five, got fucked up. So. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so you bought him for 500k, sold him for nine million. You must be delighted. Oh, over the moon, mate. Over the moon. At least, at least I know I'm all right now. If, uh, if any do come up, that one is something like a, a cheeky 500 on at least. I know I'm not tied to the board like I want with a bit. So, uh... Well, the next few players have all got new clubs, which is uh, which is great news for them. And the first one up on the list was submitted by Slavs Thomas Galasek, uh, the 32-year-old defensive midfielder. did receive a whopping one bid, um, and he will be, again, another one joining... Defending champions Dudley Hill for 250k. Um, so value for money there. Uh, not even making a dent into the nine million you've just got for El Mandesty. No, I mean it's look at his stats decent. It's basically right hand side cover. Uh, we've obviously let him stay thin and go. Uh, I've got Zanetti basically. Um, I, I didn't actually realise at the time that there were another player in the auction I were after. Um, that we was actually in there till after. Uh, but. But yeah, I thought for that, just as a bit of a right side cover, he's, he's a strong player. Uh, he's at right age now, but again, as long as, as, long as the net is fit and not banned, he'll, he won't play, but you never know, he might get a couple of appearances in him. See, yeah. if he makes a single appearance for your club, I'll give you the 250k myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, I get, if I get the other player I want, he certainly will. Uh, the next player on the list um, received a couple of bids um, of differing degrees, it's fair to say, and, it, and it's worth reminding everyone that that nobody is overpaid, is the quote that, that we received earlier. So uh, Dragons Gallardo, uh, sorry, Dudley Hills Gallardo um, was on loan at Dragons last season. Um, two managers that are with us today put in bids. So Ian, um, you put in a, a nice £3.6 million bid for him to join Northern Burn. Uh, what is it that you that attracted you to him? His versatility, or a little bit of that, and I think attributes wise, he, he was one of the better um, midfielders in the auction. Um, and I was looking for someone in midfield, attacking mm -hmm. wise as well. Um, I'm guessing that with us having no money and putting such a low bid in, that we haven't got him. Well. So, um... You, you, you certainly didn't get him because Asta um, also put in a bid of four million. So they just pitched you to it. But mm. uh, that wasn't enough for them to get him either because he will be joining Tato Mourinho at Leddesford for 14.5 million. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, well, I could hear Steve laughing. I saw Ian on the screen Bargain. put his head in his hands, and then I got Scott's reaction. So Tato, explain. Uh, value for money at 14.5? It's... Absolutely irrelevant how much he cost. I wanted the player. I had 70 million to spend. I shared the 70 million out between the players I wanted. It, it makes no difference. It's, this is the last season. Then, you know, he will play left wing, right wing, centre mid if needs be. It doesn't matter, does it? 
Uh, Doug, <laughs> I don't know if, you, if you've got it popping up on the screen as well, but Duggan, who's uh, typing in the chat because of where he is, he's just put worth every penny genuinely. Yeah, it's a dragon. <laughs> <clears throat> Probably just covered all their auction costs. Uh, Ricardo right, Gardner of Northern Burn is next up on the list. A player who, again, um, I think he actually received the most amount of bids uh, with five clubs interested in his services. Um, and uh, again, mixed, mixed bids going on. So Gazelles, they stuck a million pound in for him. Uh, they got beat to it by Dragons, who stuck two million pound in, who have been beat themselves by Hulls, who put three million pound in. Hodgy stuck £5 million in and looked to have won it with £5 million until his former club came calling and Devils went in, who I don't necessarily think need a left back, but um, Rob spent £11 million. <laughs> <laughs> okay. £11 million on Ricardo Gardner. Fucking hell, he could have had Zerubo back to £11 million. <laughs> Just imagine if Ryan were watching this now. I mean, everything in his hands has been milking itself over it, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, and uh, Doug uh, just messaging that the madness has begun. Indeed it has. So Ricardo Gardner will be leaving Northern Burn to uh, probable title rivals again next season, the Devils, for 11 million. Ian, you happy to uh, get 11 million for him? Certainly improves your uh, your budget, doesn't it? It does. It's big. It's big for me that budget wise. If I, if if there is a couple of um, guys that I'm going to get in, and it's kind of a free hit because I've got. I was always going to keep Joe Gartos, and I do have Ashley Cole coming in, so he was never going to get a game. So you have done very well out of that. Uh, the next two then uh, have received no bids. So shout up if you'd like to, or, or message me at the end if you want to put in a, a respectable 500k. Uh, but next is uh, Hall's reserve, Gilberto Silva. Another versatile player who can cover a number of positions at his uh, probably prime age. Probably surprised me that no one chanced their arm with a 500k on that one. Um, but he has gone unattached, um, as has another Asta reserve, um, Pep Guardiola. Um, I... <laughs> Capable player, but I think well past his peak now at 34 and, and probably not a surprise to anyone. That, that I think uh, I bid 500k for him when you offer him a contract and him a player coach. 500k for Guardiola and a player coach? You can indeed, unless anyone wants to... Uh, wants uh, to I, knew, I knew Scott would go for him, he loves him. I think he still looks good there, mate. I like him sent him in all day. Decent. The second player live on the auction to sign for a club for 500k. Uh, someone who didn't have to wait for the live auction was Astor's Dietmar Haman. He did receive bids. Um, I believe uh, Tater, did he not only get signed in last year's auctions? Well, in fact, probably live on the auction. I don't think you stuck a bid in for him at the time. Yeah, I think I signed him about 1.5 mil, something like that. Something like that. Wasn't uh, well, he's, he's, he looks good as well. Well, he is um, the third player of the auction to be joining Sloths, as Hodgie has bid £6 million pound for him. Bloody hell. Dee, are you in the office? No, man, I've just got home. I've been in Castle first. OK, now, we could have gone for a beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the money some of the clubs have paid, you could have afforded to pay for the whole pub. Oh, go to Bloody Dubai on, on some of ours. <laughs> Um, the next two, again, no bids received, and one of them surprises me, and I think someone live on the chat might bid, but it's not the first one that I'm going to show you. Um, it's, uh, come on, there we go. Uh, Northern Burns' Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank received zero bids um, and will be going on the transfer list. Again, capable, but uh, I think it's just one of those. No, over 30s, unless you see, seems to be unfashionable signings generally. And, uh, and Hasselbank's never really going to be challenging again some of the big hitters in the league. Um, it did surprise me, though, that uh, Emil Heskey didn't get any bids. Um, a few people have spoken about him in the past. He, he's got a reasonable goal return for the reserves. Um, I'll show you 500k in for him, please. You want to put in 500k, Yenja? Yeah. 
Uh, well, I'm happy to accept that unless anyone wants to bid on top of that. Scott, why is it that um, Pesky never really got a run? Just because of the, the other players you had? Yeah, and the fact that once the um, once the off-season transfers are processed, I'm going to be quite top heavy on strikers. He's just not going to get a sniff, so... Well, Dragons have gone one million for uh, for Heskey, so we'll see if Jens wants to up his bid at all. If not, he'll be uh, he won't be going to Hulls, and he'll be going to Dragons. Um, um, one point five. Uh, Hulls have gone one point five, so we'll let Doug and react. See if he wants to go any bigger. Um, did you expect Matt, Scott? Did you expect maybe a couple of clubs to go in for him? Yeah, I thought I'd, I think I only submitted three players for auction because I haven't got a massive amount of players in reserve. Um, I thought he was probably the only one that would be sold, to be honest. Okay. Uh, okay. Let Duggan have him for 2.5, it's okay. Yeah, so uh, the for auction it. for that one is over and uh, Heskey will go to Dragons for 2.5. Um, do you expect him to get into the Dragons team, Scott? Um, no, I think he'll be touch and go if he even gets in the 24, to be honest. But, you know, he's someone who's... Ling- you know, if they get two or three injuries and, and, and they, want a, they want a striker... Then, then maybe. I'll be right back. Um, All right. <laughs> Duncan would say he'll get into the 24 as only got Sigalco and Morientes. Um, so Heskey has a new club and, uh, and we look forward to seeing him yeah. in Dragon's Colours. Um, next up on the list is, that's one too many again, uh, Simone Inzaghi, a player who I have championed time yeah, and time again. again. You put it on. Sorry, Scott, do you want to mute yourself? <laughs> I think you can mute him, Fifi, if I you're think the I lead. I possibly can, yeah. Hang you on, I'll, I'll just stop oh. the screen share for a second. He's muted us. Go on, man. Because we don't want to hear his, no. uh, <laughs> don't need to hear his phone call. <laughs> Uh, let's go back. So Simone Zaghi then, um, he does have a club. Someone did listen to my uh, my constant praising of his abilities. And he actually had not a bad scoring record for uh, for Loco last year either. Um, but just the one bid received for him. And uh, he's the latest big money signing at Leddesford for 11 million. <laughs> Uh, Ian's laughing, Tato, but uh, what, what's your thoughts? 11 million again, good value? I mean, if no one else has bid for him, it seems like slightly excessive. <laughs> um, but I think I looked at my squad I had. I've got Van Nistelrooy, who doesn't score any goals. Behind him, I've got Constantin, who's quite good. After that, I've got nobody, really. It's just like, um, what's his name? Talon Martin. So, no, not. I, I'm not, I just need the third striker. I mean, 11 million is too much. That's I'm not. Honest. I'm not laughing by the way that you've gone and got him. Or it's, it is. I almost stuck a couple of million in. That's why I'm laughing. Um, yeah. Jens has asked, "Can Leeds afford all this?" Yes, they can. They're one of the few clubs I was explaining earlier. There's about eleven of the clubs had less than twenty million, and the other three had kind of over fifty million to spend. So those that had the budget are certainly trying to spend it in the auction. If you're annoyed at this point, Jens, I'd probably just turn off now, mate. <laughs> well, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't count your chickens before they've hatched, Tato. Honestly, there, there's something coming up in a little while that uh, you'll certainly be interested in. Uh, next up, Martin Jorgensen um, has received. Where are we on the list? Here he is. No bids, Ian. Oh, you got me all excited then. I thought you were going to say eight bids. No, no bids at all. I'm afraid. No, there's um, a surprise. So he will be going up on the transfer list unless anyone wants to take him late on. Uh, next up, we go over to is it Junior next. Yeah, we go back to Locomotive Boston and Junior, who at 32 and class, uh, you know, he's not Australian nationality. So it, it would be a risk, although he has had, he has put in some good performances over the years for Loco. Um, and someone has taken uh, the option of him. So £7 million, he will be joining Churchtown and Dimble. Uh, so an interesting acquisition in prospect um, at Churchtown, £7 million. Uh, the next one, if gone left back, so we might as well go right back. And we're back with Northern Byrne and Gary Kelly, who I believe the quote Ian was, throw Kelly in as well if he's still there. That highly thought of at Northern Byrne that you don't even remember if he was in your squad. I thought I... Uh... 
he became unhappy a while back, and I think there was an option to just to put players on the list, wasn't there? Once at the end of one season, and I thought I'd asked for him to get gone, but he's, he's stuck around and been part of a, a reserve team that's that's started picking up a lot of good results. So I guess he's been all right. I don't know. He, he won't be sticking around it anymore because he is leaving you for two million pounds to Locomotive Boston. Lovely. <laughs> Uh, was that a chuckle from you there, Steve? I think if anything's proved that Greaves has now finally completely lost the fucking plot. This is... <laughs> it's signing Gary Kelly for £2 million? Pounds. A season five, Gary Kelly. My, uh... <laughs> the, uh, the next two players, again, received zero bids. Uh, so we have um, uh, Leddisford's versatile fullback. Um not even going to attempt to pronounce it. And uh, who is next? Yeah, Kovac, who, Ian, if I remember rightly, um, again, you signed for 500k in the last auction, and then you put him back in the auction again. Yeah, he played one game for me. I think I think he played the game... He might have played the game against Tato when I rested my entire starting 11 <laughs> towards the end of the season. That, that, that might have been it. Um, it, was, it was numbers. And now I've got numbers back there with players coming in. So, yeah, not needed. No. Well, the good news for those that will be watching this is the next uh, the next few all have clubs and uh, prepare for some money to be spent as well um, <laughs> in, in the next coming players. So next up on the list, uh, Christian Krug, uh, the 19-year-old German signed by Tato while asked the manager. Um, he actually received two bids. Um, so there was a battle for his signature. Dudley Hill, um, famed for their seasoned centre backs, decided to go for a 19 year old to balance the equation and they bid 250k. But that wasn't nearly close enough to beat Leddisford and his former manager taking him with him for five million pounds. Uh, happy with that, Tato? Yeah, I sold, I sold all of my uh, centre halves to, to other teams in the league, so I, I don't have anybody left. So I, I needed him, yeah. Um, and uh, Steve, disappointed that 250k wasn't enough? Uh, not really. It, it was just because he's called as regen that we're having a nibble. I thought if anybody was going to have a nibble, it might have been Tato. I want, obviously, we want being aware overly of everybody's complete business. Uh, I want, didn't realise he were that thin on the ground at centre half. So I thought if, only, if somebody was going to bid for him, it'd be him. And it was just a shot to know because I ideally wanted George Costa, who I got anyway. So, okay, fair enough. Uh, next up on the list is Fulchester's Michael Laney. Again, received a couple of bids for him. Um, so, Steve, I'm afraid again, your £1 million bid wasn't enough um, because he is the latest player and the fourth player to be joining the Sloths Revolution as uh, Hodgie decided that four, he was worth £4 million pounds to the Sloths. Um, we, me and Hodgie discussed a couple of, of his options and I believe uh, a lot of the ones he was going for were along the lines of, I had Dyer and now I've got X, Y, Z. Uh, hence some of the bids he's put in. So £4 million. Pounds. Um, Steve, do you, do you reckon that would be value for Sloths? Uh, yeah, definitely. He's, I know he's not played. Uh, I think he's played once for Full Chester in that infamous game where Dudley will beat him when I were in charge of him. Um, uh, I think uh, as a player, as backup, uh, it, he was the one that I realised was in there. Uh, to be fair, I should have really known that money were going to come in for Gallardo and gone a little bit more, a little bit more for him. Uh, just to try and get that cover. Because like I say, I, I didn't want to as much as he did a good job for you. I still don't want to be playing Roy McKay at right wing back. Um, so Galasek may well get that game now. <laughs> uh, next up on the list is a man who received free bids, and we go back to Northern Burn. And this was a late addition, uh, Henrik Larsson going into the auction. Ian, was he thrown in just to try and bolster the um, the cash flow a little bit, not expecting 11 million for Gardner? It was a little bit, yeah. Um, I don't know if I'd, if I'd have known the 11 million for Gardner, would I have put him in? Probably still, because, I'd, but then again, I probably would have thrown a bit more money at the guys that I'm looking at. Um, he came in as part of a two up top towards the end of uh, the season, did pretty well, didn't do enough though, because we still haven't won like in 11 games or something. So 
yeah, clean break, again, get rid. Well, here's the news for you on this one. Um, Loco stuck in 5 million. That wasn't enough. Dudley stuck in 5.25 million. That wasn't enough because uh, Hodgie got that checkbook out again and he'll be going to Sloss for 6 million. Nice. So Good it was, very, it was very tight, but 6 million uh, means Henrik Larsson uh, will be joining the attacking talents at Sloughs next season. Uh, you say that was a good signing, Scott. Do you think that's good value, even at 33? Yeah, for Sloughs, definitely. Uh, next up on the list, we go back to Dragons, another reserve player thrown in, uh, Jonas London, um, and another player who has found himself a new club. Um, one bid received for him, and he'll be joining Tato for £5 million. Pounds. Yeah. Again, 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 seems excessive with the with no bids coming on in, but I'm looking at his stats. He covers a lot of the positions that I need to cover for. His stats are, his stats are good. So, yeah, I'll take that. Uh, definitely. And yeah. uh, just like I say, it's, it's another option because you are trying to, you have only just taken them over. You're trying to revamp and give the squad a new look as well for the new season. Yeah, yeah. There were just a few areas that I think they needed improving on uh, looking at how they did last season. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we've talked. Um, a player, Steve, who never really got a, a look in for you, to be fair. Um, was there any point that you were considering it or just because of how well you did this season, he was never going to get a run? Uh, no, I mean, he should have found, if he were going to find any game time, it would have been over the last three seasons prior to this. Uh, his stats just weren't developing, even in reserve, as they mostly can do. Um, felt a bit too risky putting him in, but then again, I've played some absolute melts over three seasons before this one as well, so there'd be no excuse really. But uh, yeah, he's uh, he's not somebody I overly find I get a lot of joy out of, <clears throat> even when he is good anyway. So I just thought probably the right time to, but like last season coming in, let somebody have a bit of a chance with him, as I know a couple of managers do like him. Well, we, you did receive one bid for him, um, and uh, he will be going to Northern Burn for three point six million. Um, a, an obvious replacement for outgoing forwards. I, I think you'll. I think it's fair to say, Ian. Yeah, um, it was someone I was looking at, and uh, I know that uh, Steve very kindly offered offered him on loan. But I don't really like loan players coming in. I like permanent deals, and so <laughs> I stuck. I stuck in what I thought I could afford. Um, I, someone I like. Um, so. And he's not as good as he as he normally is, but you never know. You never know. Uh, let's face it, at Northern Burn, if he does play, he's certainly going to have chances created for him. Uh, next up on the list is Devils uh, forward Mido. I don't know if it's ever been mentioned, but he actually scored in a grand final once before this boy. <laughs> um, and he received four bids. Um not from Gazelles, interestingly. So clearly Martin didn't fancy him after his loan spell last season. Um, and he, I think he's actually had the highest total amount of bids combined as well. Um, so let's start from the bottom. And uh, Scott, you stuck in two million. I'm afraid that was nowhere near enough. So anyone that's paying more than that, do you think it's borderline excessive? Um, no, not really. I wasn't desperate for him. Um... Just a, it was just on the off chance that nobody fancied him. I expected um, some people to fancy him though, but ballpark. No, no where are you thinking? What sorry? Ballpark. Where do you think the fee ends? I think we're probably looking at ten million. About ten. Well, next up on the list is Loco. Uh, they bid ten million, and that wasn't enough. Well, um, we had a joint highest bid for him, so the two managers had to rebid, and both managers are on. Uh, or I hope are still on now. Uh, let me just catch up um, on the chat, just seeing what I've missed there. Um, so the two managers involved in the negotiations were Leddisford and Halls. Uh, both had to rebid because they'd initially bid the same. Was it? It was. I think it was twelve or thirteen million, Tater, that, that both you and Jens had bid originally. Um, thirteen million. So the rebids came in. Leddisford went fifteen point two five. And Hulls went 15.5. So he'll be joining Jens. Uh, Tato misses out by 250k. So congratulations to Hulls. Mido will be lining up for you for 15 million next year. Um, disappointed to miss out on him, Tato? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah, I really want. Not happy him. to save the fifteen and a quarter nah, mil. No, nah, listen, I wanted him. I, I like him, and he, he looks very, very good. Looks like my sort of player. But I mean, fifteen point two five was far too much. And <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm, still I'm amazed. Out. I'm amazed someone's gone higher. But you know, is what it is. Need a striker. And uh, Jens, if if you're able to, are, are you happy to spend the fifteen and a half on him? Um. Yeah. I've. I've... I had almost 60 million, I think, in the bank, and I didn't bid for that many players. So I thought the ones that could possibly, I mean, not only go into the 24, but possibly play some games and have an impact. And I'd rather go a couple of mil more than than what they're worth than, than a couple of mil too less to, to yeah. lose out. No, absolutely. Well, I look forward to seeing what you do with him next season, Pat. Uh, next up on the list is someone who's one of the most talked about players in the Super League, and it's Ledesford's uh, Nicky Ferenko. Poss- uh, widely considered the worst Nicky Ferenko everyone has ever seen. Um, so, Tato, as soon as you came in, you were like, no, not having it. Uh, I mean, I quite like it. I, quite, I don't mind him. I don't, I don't even hate what he looks like there. I don't think it's that bad, if I'm honest. But... Um... I just I was quite intrigued to see how much he'd go for in the auction. <laughs> and okay, Big well, Kid it's insisted. an interesting it's an interesting <laughs> one this one because obviously there was potential that he was lined up in a deal, but the manager had actually already done five deals and and hadn't realised, so he couldn't go there. So there was speculation he may then bid in the auction. Well, that mm-hmm. manager hasn't even put a bid in for him in the auction, but needless to say, he has left, and he will be lining up again for the defending champions Dudley for four million pounds. Considerably less than you were getting Tato, but uh, Steve, you happy with that? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, I was talking to Tato before auction. Uh, I was looking at a, a backup AMC auction for Mackay uh, that give you some sort of goal threat as well. Uh, it's a notoriously hard position to get goals out of. Uh, <clears throat> having watched final back again, Mackay, he's, he's got 12 goal contributions in 16 games he's played, so he'll be starting every game he can. But I think as as backup and coming in, um, I'm of the ilk of he's a name, he's still got the same abilities, even though his ratings out there, and we'll see if he can make a bit of a difference. And it puts Adolfo probably in, in reserves now. That okay, uh, Nicolidis was next up, and he's the latest Aster player not to receive a bid from anybody. Um, slightly younger than some of the other strikers who haven't had bids, but uh, still post 30. I'll have um, 500k on him, yeah, again, again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it, did you, again, was it not another auction player last time? It was. Is that because of how impressive he was last season? Does anyone want to outdo the 500k from Tato for him? I'll take the stunned silence as a no. So, uh, congratulations. Is, Mar- is, is Miles better than me, though, anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Go and get Hasselbank, Tato. And £15 million pound cheaper as well, Tater. Saving the pennies. Uh, next up um, is another devil player submitted. Um, Oliveira was uh, put in. Um, He's received definitely going to slot. Uh, you are right, Scott. Um, the, the former boss has taken his man with him, the only manager to bid, and uh, has gone to his former club and paid them £3 million pound for his services. He's very much a hodgy player, isn't he, Scott? Yeah, loves him. And, I'll uh, tell you what I'm loving about this auction more than all. Hodgie's not bought a single player in any auction previous. And because, <laughs> of, because of what he's having to do now, he's just going for it. I think it's fantastic. Well, he said himself, as, as fun as it is being at a, uh, at like a big club with, full of star players, he's, uh, he's enjoying really getting involved in transfers again because he's uh, notoriously quiet when he was at Devils. Is that all three of his clubs that he's had Oliveira at in this version? No, he brought him in for Devils, I think. He brought him in for Ardsley before this as well. Yeah, I don't think he was at um I don't think he Ledis- was at Ledisford, was he? Right, okay. No. Uh, but the latest player in the Sloths Revolution will be Oliveira. Uh, next up we've got Dudley Hills and Mark Overmars. And he has found himself pastures new. Steve, you'll be relieved to know. We, did you expect him to uh, to leave, or, or was this another player you thought might just end up on the transfer list? Uh, no, I expected him to leave. I know, I know one manager in particular likes him. 
Uh, if another manager was <clears throat> active enough in searching and putting bids in, I might expect him to a little bit because I know he likes his players and his big name players. Uh, it's just obviously going into next season, um, I won't be tinkering again. As much as it, it sounds stupid, we're winning it. Did actually miss a little bit of the having to think about it too much and overthink it at times, you know, <laughs> some stuff. But, uh, but yeah, he's never going to get a game. He's never going to get a game. Uh, so, so where do you see. think he's gone, Steve? I know Dimbo liked him. Uh, the other, if I wouldn't have been surprised to see Mac put a bid in if he's been active enough to do so. Okay. Well, you're wrong on both counts uh, because he's going to Asta for six million. Ah, well, I, I'll did say Alpha messaging me about his scout ratings of players that I've put in. Mm. So yeah, it's a bit unsurprising as well. Um, Asta were the only team to bid for him. Um, and so there he goes to Asta. The next three players, just so you know, have received no bids. So if you do want to throw in 500k, let me know. Uh, the first on that list is another Asta reserve. Uh, I'm guessing possibly the man that Overmars will be replacing. Um, but Peralta has received no bids. Neither has uh, Pedersen of Leddesford. Um, again, another younger sort of player. I've definitely seen better versions of him uh, attributes wise. This, this certainly is not the best Pedersen and he's suffering from not playing any games. Um, and then the third man on the list of receiving no bids is uh, another Leddesford player, uh, Pedrinho. Um, Tato, th that's two players of yours there that you submitted that no one put in bids for. I'm guessing as you've come in and decided no, you're, you're perhaps not surprised. Ah, they're oh. awful. This is this is why I'm trying to spend all my money on new players because squad depth is very, very bad. Uh, I mean, do, you, do you blame the previous, like the, the previous 28 managers before you for what they've left yeah. you with? It's it's uh, it's a mixture of ideas, different managers bringing in different <laughs> ideas. Uh, and what it's left. It's it's a versatile squad I've got, but not particularly high in quality in some areas. He he's rubbish. I don't know what he's doing here. Uh the next Alf recommended him to Wooder. <laughs> the next player on the list is the is another Leddesford player, but he has got a new club tater. Um, and he is a man who, um, like Mido before him, had two managers bid the same amount. Uh, so we had to go to rebids. And again, it's a minor difference that's cost them. So uh, Jens uh, was one of those two again. He had two players who he had joint bids for. Um, his rebid of 8 million, though, was not enough to stop Hodgie adding another player um, as Hodgie went 8.5 for his services. Uh, so 8.5 million, Tato. Are you happy with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he actually looks quite good looking at him again, but... Um... <laughs> Eight million's a lot of money. No, you're all right. I'll, I'll have the money. Um, Jens, if you're there, you disappointed to have missed out. Like I say, you were one of the joint high bids and had to rebid for it. Uh, it doesn't bother me too much. I think just thought it looked decent and, I mean, can always do with a backup DMC. Uh, it's Absolutely. No well, unfortunately, you didn't win that one, pal, but uh, you have won a couple already and you have got more bids to come. Uh, through the rest of the auction. The next two, again, received no bid. So shout up if you'd like to throw one in. I'm a little bit surprised that Passato didn't for his versatility. Um, I can only guess it's because of his age, really. He's white. Yeah. Oh, awful. Hello, Rob. Perfect. I didn't I didn't, uh, I didn't. see Rob come in. How are you, pal? I'm all right. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. We've, uh, you've, We've been discussing some of your uh, transfer dealings um, at your new club. Uh, how are you finding things at the Devil's Lair, by the way? It's absolutely fantastic. It's nice not to uh, have to look at a squad that's full of shit. Although that was basically my own fault, I, I'll admit that. I'm looking forward to um, I'm looking forward to destroying another another great club. Well, speaking uh, Rob, of destroying Rob, another great club, can you explain you... 11 million for Ricardo Gardner, please? Yeah. He's got, he's got a couple of 20s. I've got loads of fucking money. What else am I going to do with it? Just chuck it. Let's spread the love. Let's spread the wealth around. <laughs> well, um, Ian was very wrong. happy to get 11 million for it. Hey, anytime, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, who did you suck off to get the devil's job? Because it's a bit like Nigel Clough getting the Man City job. <laughs> you know me, man. If, if there's enough fibers, I'll suck off anyone. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll, take any, I'll take any on. 
<laughs> and uh, Hodgie has uh, Hodgie's been busy in the auction and in the transfer window to rebuild the Sloths job. Are you expecting him to to do a reasonable job there, or or do you think it's one of those where it, the club has no chance regardless, and uh, you are happy to leave? I think that, um, the Sloths side needs a, a a rebuild of you know massive proportions because it was absolutely dog shit. So uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not surprised to see him. Uh, to see him dipping his toes in the water. How many has he got so far? How many has he got? Well, up to this point, he has signed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus his five transfers. <laughs> Blimey, because I know the Swaps have got uh, plenty of cash as well, haven't they? So uh, They're doing all right. And uh, speaking of managers that have that have snuck in, I believe Greavesy's there as well. How are you, pal? How are you now? Greavesy, you there? Well, he definitely tried to get in. Obviously, someone's kicked him out of the door. They don't want. They don't want. Nasty. To try here. Nasty. Audio's not a, working. Having a having a break from fornicating his family members. That's always nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's. Uh, so yes, as as I say, Pesotto, um has received no bids and will be going on the transfer list. As will, um, again, I believe an auction signing last year, Petkovic. Now, if I remember right. Steve, did you not sign him in the auction from Halls for a lot of money? Uh, yeah, I wasn't was it too much. I think it was about six million. Um, his stats back then were very, very good. His stats are always very good. After speaking to Jens after, he's done plenty of saves with him, obviously. He's done a lot of Brazilian saves due to his, his personal life, etc. And uh, he's one of them that flat has to deceive. Um, he should be on a level looking at him, like Roy Mackay, etc. But uh, he's just not. I love how Roy Mackay was one of the shittest players in the Super League. You you do one season with him and suddenly you're talking like he's Pele. Well, I just mean he's had a very good season and, uh, you know, he's been played in his position. <clears throat> Whenever he's played, he's played in his proper position and he is an attacking midfielder, he's not a striker. And uh, I think <clears throat> there's a few players in this season that come whenever a redraft does happen. Uh, I think there's a few players that are going to find their values probably a little bit inflated because of how they've done throughout this this iteration well that's what we can only hope for uh, the super league isn't just for the already established it's to establish new uh, players and characters um next up we are briefly are you managed connecting yet no obviously not uh, you know, Jake? i've got issues <laughs> well we I'll knew you had issues greasy <laughs> But uh, nice to see you here, pal. Enjoy the rest of the uh, enjoy the rest of the auction. Um, man that uh, Greasy brought in from outside the league um, came in, scored, I believe, on his debut. Then played the next game, didn't score, and never got another kick of a football because of it. Um, but he has gone to pastures new. Uh, Jens has signed in to give him a second chance in the Super League for three million. Um, Jens, if you if you're there, three million, decent value for the player. Don't think he's uh, he's currently available. Scott, do you think three million for a player like this is uh, is going to be good for Halls? Uh, three million is three million. I just think ultimately probably not going to play, so it's a bit of a waste, really. Okay, um, Ian, same same question to you. Halls who were there or thereabouts this season and looking to compete again next year. Do you, do you think that this adds enough quality to the squad? I mean, Jens has got previous, hasn't he? Of uh... Of going and buying a shitload of strikers <laughs> in an auction, and the, and you never see hiding a hair of him. But I must admit, if 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 you'd have said that no one had a bid for him, I would have chucked a, sne a sneaky a sneaky one in on the day. Okay. So he looks decent. Uh, well, if you are interested in a sneaky one, Ian, the next two have not received any bids at all. Uh, the first one, uh, Martin Royce, another loco player. Um, been in and out of the side over the years, but never had that really solid run in the first team. Um, but a, a decent squad player and versatile again, only 30 years old. But I'll speak 500 and 500, yeah, no worries. Anyone want to top the 500k from Dudley? Doesn't look that way. So he will be joining the defending champions for 500k. Uh, why Why interested now, Steve? Just because you thought someone else might have bid, but for 500k, it's, it's value? Uh, no. Um, I knew we were going into the auction from speaking at Greavesy. Uh, 
on the times he's played, he went through a spell. I think after his first three games, when Graves had played him, he was averaging 9.33 after three games. Um, it was just because of where I needed to get cover from, uh, for, sorry. Um, and I didn't actually go there because I had 17.75. So once I'd taken out the players I were interested in and felt like I needed, um, but now I know I've got loads and loads of millions coming in. Um, <laughs> might, as well, uh, might as well stick a bit in. Uh, the next player uh, that will be going on the transfer list is another Dragons player, Fernando Rickson. Um, very much in the same mould, I would say, as, as Stephen Carr, that he's got attributes that you might have him in a squad on a on a home save, but not necessarily going to get a look in anywhere um, in the Super League. Um, oh, I'll stick 505 there. Uh, Steve's throwing in that championship money now. Uh, another 500k. Anyone want to top 500k for Rickson, or is he the, another player that going, going into Dudley's reserves? Better than Galasek, so. <laughs> <laughs> Just try to save Scott, he's 250k. Yeah, I am. Um, I believe if he's connected in, we're now joined by uh, Churchtown Boss Dimble. You there, pal? I did see his name crop up. Is he also having audio issues? Or has he disappeared again? Hello. Ah, there he is. How are you, pal? All right, mate. I'm just sat on the toilet. My aunt is having a shit. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for joining the auction live from the loo. Did I get any players? Uh, well, we've not finished yet, but hang on. Uh, where's Churchtown on my list? Junior. Uh, yes, you signed Junior. Perfect. Thank you. No worries. Um, your only other player you've bid for so far, you lost out on. No, yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm done. I don't need anyone else. All trash. Okay, no worries. Well, glad you could uh, join us anyway. Um, the next player to sign for a new club, and uh, everyone I think knows where this one's going. Uh, John Arnarisa was put up by Hulls, and uh, just the one bid, and another player joining the Sloths Revolution for <laughs> six million pounds. Um, <laughs> I, I can hear a bit of reaction. Um, I will ask Rob first. Uh, do you think Risa will do well at Sloths? Is he still there? No. Um, let's go to uh, Scott then. Uh, six million for Risa, decent value. Where's he gone? Sloths. Oh, I think he's probably an upgrade on what odd he's got available. Um, so, Basically, any player going to Sloths at the minute is an upgrade. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, whether he's going to feature in week in, week out, I, I would say probably not, but he's versatile and he'll cover a few positions. So, you know, if he's got cash to spend, then, then yeah, I guess that's probably a decent value. The next player to go to Pastures New is another Northern Burn player. Um, Ian, why, why did Risp go in? Just, again, because of the players you've got coming in, he was not going to feature? Not going to feature. Hasn't done much numbers-wise in the reserves. I thought I'd get a mil or two for him. I thought one manager in particular would go for him. Who was that one manager um, out of interest? Uh, the one manager in the, is in the chat now who, who, who uh, I thought would have gone for him. I thought, I thought he might have gone to um, Leddersford for a couple of mil, perhaps. Okay. Well, I can confirm he hasn't, but he has gone for a few mil. Uh, he'll be going to Dragons for four million. Right. Well, that's, better, that's better than four million. Fantastic. Uh, I just want to say, Duggan, are you still there for, for reaction to signing risk for four million? There you are. Yes, mate. I'm currently just about to get down for a nap, but I'm delighted with that. Good signing. Four mil. Excellent. Well, I'm glad you're happy. Um, the next... Five players that we're going to uh, go through quite quickly um, did not receive any bids, so we'll be transfer listing unless anyone wants them. And the first of those is uh, Rogerio, a goalkeeper from Asta. Uh, Alf clearly deciding he's not uh, going to be the number one choice. Uh, next up to go on the transfer list is Devils Shuleth. Um, I gave a few opportunities while I was manager, but uh, never got a look in really with Hodgie. Um, next up, we have Silvino. Uh, no one interested in the loco fullback. Silvino is better than John Anarisa. I'll say that for now. Well, not according to Hodgie, who bid, bid for one and not for the other. Um, Solskjaer, 
can't find himself a club at the moment. Even in a Man United loving squad like Fulchester, um, he was put up for auction and no one was interested. And the final player um, to receive no bids was Northern Burns' Michael Stewart. Uh, sorry, was someone going to say something on Solskjaer there? No? I thought I had, a, thought I had someone shout out. Um, however, the next two have found new clubs. And we start with Christian Tim of Churchtown. Um, again, another out-of-league signing that it's just not quite worked out for. Um, is, is Dimble available yet, or is he still conducting business? Their business is finished, but I am still lingering in the toilet, so I can't be too long. <laughs> no worries. I just, I just wondered why, uh, why Tim was put up for auction. Just it, he'd had enough chances, and it wasn't going to happen. Yeah, there was one. To be fair, he did okay when he first came in. There was one, one performance that particularly annoyed me is where we won five two or something like that, and he got a six and did fuck all. So at that <laughs> point, he was dead to me. Uh, well, he is the latest acquisition at Hulls for four million pounds. Yeah, I think it's worth. I think it's worth a punt as a backup. He's not. He's not a bad player. Um, now, Steve's going to laugh when he sees the next one, but I'm delighted that he's going to be remaining in the Super League. Um, and it's uh, John Dow Thomason. Um, he he has found a new club. Um, now, I think I maybe did this once before myself. Um, so the poetic <laughs> irony of what's about to happen. Uh, one bid received, and the manager is in the chat, or, or was, I'm not sure if he still is, um, but John Dow Thomason will be leaving Astor for the Devils for £12 million. Um, Rob, are you still there? £12 well, um, uh, Clearly not. Uh, Tato, as a former Astor boss, £12 million for Thomason. Thoughts? As why, why is he signing for £12 million? I signed him. I think I signed him in last year. Look, for him, look at John Dal Thomason's transfer history. He's he's made some big moves in the past. I, I spent 500k on him last year because nobody. <laughs> I sold him for 15 in the first season. Uh, I don't get that. That's a that's a mad deal. But if he can get him playing, fair enough. Duggan's well, very much want, enjoying the Devils by... bidding. Um, but this is the second one that's made him laugh in the chat as well. Uh, so, uh, Greasy, you've not had much of it. I'm not had, giving you much of an opportunity to, to have much of a say. Uh, Thomason for 12 million. You, you're not fully uh, on board with that one at Devils, then? Well, I sold him for 15, I think, in the end of season one. And he only played one game for me for a laugh, and that was against you. <laughs> so I think that sums up. But Rob's got a history of overpaying for players when he tried to buy Batistuta for 48 million. Oh, wow. Uh, you think this one's good? Wait, there's there's a couple more players yet, and the Devils haven't finished signing people yet either. <laughs> <laughs> can we retract? Can we change these um, these predictions we dug in on like where people are finishing? Uh, next up, uh, Ronald Waterus um, has not received any bids. Um, now the big one, the big one that everyone's been waiting for, Richie Wellens. Uh, Richie Wellens did receive two bids. Um, the Dragons were obviously always going to be interested and bid a very respectful. Sorry, whoever's got loud noise in the background, can you mute it? Thank you. Um, Richie Wellens, uh, Dragons were always going to be interested in putting a very respectable six and a half million pounds. Uh, <laughs> I've just, I've just uh, seen his <laughs> Yeah. Um, you're right, Doug, and you haven't got Wellens because someone outbid your six and a half million. And again, it was Devils. And Rob went in with 12 million. 12 million pounds to the Devils for Richie Wellens. Um, clearly... The best squad in Super League history. What the fuck's he doing? <laughs> But, but on the flip side of that, in a sense, in the final, Odgy played Makoko in centre midfield. There's, because there's a little bit available. of logic in that. There's a little Wait, bit of logic you, in it. Steve, you just flip back one player to run a one. Mm -hmm. You're going to play him centre midfield. Timbo, mute yourself. <laughs> Can I, I just, I mean, uh, me and Taylor had a conversation last night. It was like, you bid six and a half million for Willens. Willens, you don't have to bid six and a half million for him. Like, oh, I just want to make sure I get him just for the crack. <laughs> what a joke that is. What um, a joke that is. 
Well, is this part? Is this partly because everyone's already done their deals, and the only people Hodge has got left to deal with is Rob, and the only one Rob's got left to deal with is Hodge, <laughs> and and obviously like Devils aren't going to want to let their players go to slots, are they? Because they're all better than theirs, so they're limited on what deals they can do, I guess, aren't they? Um, I quite like Wellens, mate. His passing's good. His creativity's good. But I mean, you, twelve million if, is just a bit big, isn't it? If you took his name off that stats bar and just said D- did an Alice mystery man, people would be all over him for six and a half. Maybe he's even eight nine. But but twelve's a little bit much. You brought me out there, Hodge. Mystery man, I'd just delete it. I'm just gonna. <laughs> are you uh, are you disappointed to miss out, Duggan? I'm disappointed. I wanted to, I wanted to make him a super league winner. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> Um, well, unfortunately, I should have been on it then, shouldn't I? Season too late, mate. Season too late. That's the last big money signing, I'm afraid, as both York and Zuma received zero bids. Um, so they will be going on the transfer list. Um, so that is the end of the auction. I'll have York 500k. Oh, yeah, chuck him in. Yeah, anyone else yeah. want to uh, beat that? Stats look decent, mate. Like. Can I can I do sixteen million for Wellens? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so five hundred k Dwight York will be going to Leddisford. Um, so yes, that concludes the the auction. Uh, thank you guys for for joining it live. All the results will be going up on the Twitter feed when I get back from the football later, um, and the processing begins. Um, just to remind everyone that Thursday we've got the, the special friendlies for uh, mostly non-Super League managers and a couple of Super League managers trying out new clubs for a laugh. Um, Friday uh, Friday night there'll be a preview show probably from about nine o'clock. Um, we'll, uh, Duggan's very kindly put a load of figures together. Um, I'll host it through Zoom. Again, it'll be recorded and uploaded for anyone who misses it to watch back. And then the season starts properly on Sunday, um, which I know all of you are very, very excited for. Um, But no, thank you very much for joining the auction. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy your new players. And uh, I will see you again on Thursday. Cheers, mate.